Alright, I got some dyed blanks up here. I'm gonna make some red ones. Here I show y'all how to do it. First of all, you wanna stick your blanks in there. Heat them up so they're good and dry. Uh, about eight hours or so, but if you're in a dry climate and they're inside, you may not have to. I got them of eight different types here. Oh, I dig them all out. And usually, to dry them out, you know, I got one of these ovens here. I put on 150 to 200 degrees somewhere and let it run for about eight hours. And then we got the pressure pot, or the vacuum pot, I mean. Sorry about that. Pull this out. Stack them all in there. Doing it this way, it holds about 15 of these. Uh, if I got a new wood, usually I do at least a couple layers of these. But we're just dyeing some, some of the wood like I normally have. Set them in there like that. I get my weight. Doing this with one hand, trying to film and do it. There we go. I got that done. And this here is my used uh, compound that I use for the stabilizing compound. Okay, this is my used cactus juice. I get it from Turntex. You can pull them up on turntex.com. Uh, cactus juice is my stabilizing compound. You can use it and use it and use it and use it and use it. It comes... When you get it new, it's semi-clear, but this has been used several times with many different types of wood all types of wood has color and sometimes the color will just kind of stay with the compound that's in the wood but we'll use a, a, a luminolite translucent dye I'm trying to do this one-handed just doesn't work real well All right, let's try that again. Now, this here, you just open it up like that. That unscrews a little bit. Put some in there like so. Yeah, I'm doing a board too. You reach over here and mix it up. That's going to make a pretty red on there. Now... If I can't get this in my hand without spilling it everywhere and getting red all over my already messy area. And we'll pour in about, we'll get in about a half inch over the wood. I might as well just pour it all in there. It's all red. Now you want to remember, whenever you get it out of the oven, let it warm up a little bit. Because this stuff cooks in 
at about 200 degrees. And so your wood really don't need to be no more than 100 degrees when you start out. But now that we got this little mess going on, we will turn on our pump. And let me get my lid on straight. And we'll pull vacuum down to, to 30 inches. I can still see the bubbles through there. You ain't going to on the camera. Maybe you can see it move a little bit, but usually I'll run this for about 30, 45 minutes for this amount of fluid. And then I'll let it set for a day or two before I stick it in the oven. So we're gonna let it run for a little bit and then let it soak and I'll get back in touch with you. Alright, so I vacuumed this up for about an hour, two days in a row. And then I'd turn it off and let it soak. And then uh, it's been sitting for a few days afterwards just to let everything soak up because I ain't had time to get to it. Pull your weight out. Now everything on here is going to be red. And this is some pretty good dye. As you can see down there, don't put anything on it that uh that you don't want to turn red because it'll all turn red. And when you get done with this stuff, before you do something else in here, you really want to wash it out good or you'll have red in whatever else you do. But I'm going to pull these out and I'm going to dry them off. Uh, I got some of these gloves here i'm gonna be wearing i highly recommend you wear gloves with this if it's clear i don't worry about it but with a red unless you're gonna walk around for a few days with red hands till it wears off but we're gonna dry them all off and then i'm gonna wrap them up in some this is these foil sheets i get from sam's club that's the perfect size to individually wrap them and then we'll stick them in the oven. And I'm going to set you up on the tripod and show you how to do it. You just want to get these things as dry as you can so you have as less the less amount of bleed out as possible. Look at that grain there. It's going to be interesting.
Okay, next is uh, time to cook it. Uh, these here make about 15 of them uh, per single layer in my pot. So that's just what I do. If I'm doing a new wood, I'll do about three layers worth. That way you get plenty of regular stabilized, but since I'm only doing these colors right now, just do these, stick them in here, and I get me a separate thermometer, stick in there. Uh, turn it to run. Go up there at about 225. I say this needs to be at 200 degrees. For two to four hours usually I run it at least four if not longer just to make sure at about 225 so sometimes these are off so I have to go buy my oven uh, thermometer in there so we'll let it cook and then we'll take them out Uh, it's been about six hours since I stuck these in the oven. When I pull them out, normally I just pull out a few at a time because they tend to, uh, the foil comes off better whenever they're warm than whenever they're cold. Once they get cool, then you can bet that stuff is going to be pretty hard. And they are hot. So I'll scribe them like this. And yes, they are hot. It's over 200 degrees, so. Pull it out. There we go. There's the bleed out that you're going to see. And that bleed out is, will harden up as well. Uh, some of them will have more. Some of them will have less. It doesn't really matter as long as you get the foil off. Ow, ow, ow. Ha, 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 ha. But you get all the foil off and you'll be able to see. And I don't know if we'll be able to see what type of wood they are again over the Sharpie marks, over the die. I didn't do the rest of them. Decided to do that, but... That's looking pretty neat. Okay, now you can really tell how some of the wood pulled in a lot of it, some of it didn't. 
Some of it soaked it up, and some of it didn't. And I had all these written in Sharpie what they was beforehand, but you can't see it now. I hear that there was a holly, I know that. But that's gonna be kind of a pink. But some of the most of these, I won't be able to even have a clue of what it is until I start turning it. But you can tell the different types of wood, the closed and open sails. Some of it take it better than others. But it's still gonna leave some pretty interesting grain. them cool off a couple days and I'm gonna pick out five of them and we're gonna go turn them and see what it looks like. Alright I brought five of these out here we're gonna go ahead and make some pins out of them. I got five of these little slim line kits. Not sure how they're gonna look inside. I haven't done this before so this will be my first turning of a dyed pin. So let's get started. These little pin kits I use here, none of them are, they're all polished. They ain't got a, uh, they ain't roughed up. So I got some 150 emery cloth. And you just hit them like that. And that cleans them up and roughs them up for your CA glue to stick. Now, I use CA medium, front label done came off, but I say use CA medium, stick fast on everything. And get you a little wooden dowel rod. You can buy the special insert tool they use, or you can just make your own tool. One thing about that dowel rod, whenever it gets coated up with CA glue, all you gotta do is Stick it in the sander or stick it, take it to the sander and sand it down. But you just work both sides here. 
make sure you get it in a hole, can or sump. And now, these little mats I got, you see a, a blue one I'm working on, and a pink one over to the side. That pink one, it works okay, but it is mighty thin. It's cheaper, and they'll send you two or three of them in a bunch, and it's pretty cheap. And even though it works for that glue not sticking to it too bad, it tears pretty easily. Whereas this blue one here, it is a lot thicker. I haven't had any problems with it tearing. And it has these little sections up there. So if I wanted to, for when I'm putting my pins together, I ain't needed that. And it also has a little magnet on the back that'll hold stuff. It's supposed to hold stuff up there in that little part section, but I haven't needed that. I just like it because it's thicker and it keeps all the glue off the table. But we'll go through and just glue them all. Once they're all glued up, well, you need to let them sit at least an hour or so. Usually I let them sit to the next day or that, or the fall after lunch and do it, so. All right, y'all, getting ready to do a barrel trimmer on these here. And I wanted to show y'all kind of just what I do to set my, my set up. I got my 7 millimeter, which I use the most. And here's the, the starter point. This in here is the carbide one. That's the one I use for most of your acrylics. And I got your 8. 10 or 8 3 8 and then 10 millimeter i think this is 11 but i got some 11 10 and a half or 11 and a half whatever guess got, got some others in there that i can bring out this is my 5 16 i use for my stoppers and here i got my barrel trimmers and on my 8 millimeter i got this here's one that comes with your cheaper sets it's just a regular uh, I don't even know if it's high speed steel, but it's just a regular steel trimmer. And then I have these carbides that I started buying because they last longer. But if you look right there, it, they chip on the edges. And once they chip on the edges and they get down too far, then they won't leave you a good flush trim. Now, some of these are still okay. But I try and keep one set up for your eight, I mean your seven, eight, 3 8 and 10 millimeter because that's your most popular sizes. And then I have the sleeves off over yonder for uh, these bigger ones. But here recently, since I had problems finding some 3 quarter carbide, I decided to step up my game. And I got this one here. Now, I've used it once, and I really like it. But this has the uh, carbide cutters that you can swap out, which I really like. I got to order me some more of them, so I'll have spares. I really like that carbide, and I really like cutting it out. But this, I got it off of Amazon, I think. But there's that old school pen barrel. You open it up 
and it has all the different sizes in here as well. Uh, I think this is going to be a pretty good ordeal. There it is, old school. This was about, I don't know, $50, $55. Somewhere between $50 and $60. Bucks. Now, a regular carbide. One of these here. Last time I bought one, I think it was like $30. Bucks. I don't know if it was three quarter or five eighths. So, there you got more money, but you got all you got to do is buy them little cutters and swap them out and then you got a good tool to cut anything and plus these have a this has a step down on it see if i can get it in here there it is on that seven millimeter most of your other seven millimeters don't have that that i have anyway so this will actually touch off on your brass and it won't leave it hasn't left a lip on my little brass insert on the sevens i ain't had you don't have that problem on any of the bigger ones but the sevens normally you got to trim down that little lip but with this here you don't have to so this is where i got that check it out uh i say finally doing an upgrade so here we go let's go ahead and i'm gonna stick the cutter in there and we'll trim these up
All right, sorry I didn't get that second one in there. Forgot to start the video. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, put together two of these for you. I got two different types of kits, or two different. They're both slimline kits. One of them's a, a click, and the other one's a twist. Go together a little bit differently, but... Uh, they're fairly easy. I get these from Rising Industries at the Pen Kits Mall. I order them straight from China. As you well know, a lot of this stuff comes from either China or Taiwan, and it's all pretty similar in quality. Uh, and it don't matter who you go through. Here in the U.S., I go through Penn State Industries or and wood turnings sometimes for kits and. Some of them I see are made in Taiwan, so uh, actually made in the U.S. I don't think any of them are, and I really don't think it matters because the quality for a pin kit is there with these. Uh, so, like I say, if you go to Pin Kits Mall, you can order them uh, straight from the manufacturer, as far as I can tell. But these here, pretty easy. Put the tip in. press it in this twist you'll want to go into that little countersink there and I always try and stay a little shy back just in case uh, if you mess up it's easier to push it in a little further than take it back out in fact the only way I've found to get them out is to actually destroy them by pulling it apart Oh, this is a lot easier. See, I'm a little bit shy there, and it's just about right there, so that worked out good. Put that on. Let me turn that air compressor off. There we go. Now y'all can hear me and I can hear the peace and quiet. Just put that in there. Press it in. Usually I try and line up these two markings. Put there. Yep, I think it's going to be that one. 
press it in. There we go. All right, and that's for the twist pin. I'll put this down here. And now let's try this click pin. Get all these pieces out here. Don't need that. These here. I got a drawer here. Had all my stuff, put them right there. Cord out the way. And y'all gotta excuse me if I'm not used to talking while I'm doing stuff. Usually if I'm talking while I'm doing stuff, I'm talking to myself and I end up arguing with myself sometimes. Funny how that happens, but uh, and all this stuff comes in these all individual packages. Now, I have found with these, this is a this end is a twist end. This is how you reload it. So, I have put on a couple of these, and it got put on so hard by when I put these other pieces together. I put that on first that it was difficult to get it unscrewed without causing damage so I got now to where I'll build put that on last so we'll put on the center band now we're gonna go like this I think it's yeah like that that looks good don't it You could really turn it either way, but we well, gonna turn it this way. Top on. Yeah, Cause that one fits pretty snug, and if I would have done this one last, it may have been really tight. Or that one first, and that one may have been tough getting unscrewed. But now. There you go. You can undo it this way. Gotta take all that, that wax off the tip. Now this has a tight end and a loose end. You put that tight end on there first. It'll drag all the way up to there. That way it don't fall off. that on, flip her over, drop your spring in, woohoo, dropping stuff ain't it, that'll well, be the first time I'm good at dropping stuff, and there we go. But I have really enjoyed that red dye. Uh, I guess this is the first time I've turned some of them dyed pins. I'm going to show the rest of them to you here as soon as I get them done, and we'll go from there. All right, so here's my five pins I made. You can see this holly here which was the whitest pen. It turned out kind of pink. This here, I think, is a chestnut. I think this is my dogwood, but I'm not sure. This is a beech. But they all took it pretty good. It didn't look like it on the outside, but they did pretty good. So I enjoyed making these red ones, or the red dyed, stabilized whatever you want to call them 
So I'm gonna do some more of these. I'm gonna do some of the blues and the greens and the purples and different colors and have them available for people as well. So uh, tell me what you think about this. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you like it. Thumbs down if you don't, that's okay. Just tell me what I could do to improve. And you wanna see some more of this, just stick around and watch the next one.